And this is a tape of 20 September 1967, made on an island in the sea. And it is addressed to all staff and students of Scientology organizations. The background noise that you hear is not in actual fact tape noise. It is the wind howling up a cliff and hitting over the area where I am sitting. Out before me here is the wide blue sea with ships passing by, a few fleecy clouds overhead, and the bright sun shining down. I am giving you this short talk because you might have wondered what I was doing. Rumor lines are not very reliable, to say the least, and in a world which is as wog as this one, are not likely to even approach truth. I do not like to create a mystery with regard to our activities. You have heard mention of the Sea Org, the Sea Organization, and you are likely to hear other mentions of it as time goes on. This is in reality just another Scientology organization with the difference that it handles extremely advanced work and materials and its personnel are OTs. Its mission is to bring clears through the upper levels safely and certainly and with speed and it also has the mission of getting in ethics. On Earth it would be quite impossible to bring in a totality of Scientology technology without first bringing in ethics. We have learned that technology does not thrive in an area which is interbulated and which has many suppressives and factors which are hostile to the better side of life. We are in organizations making progress to the degree that they bring in good order inside the organization and in their immediate areas. Only then do we have technology effective and functioning. The only time that Scientology technology is ineffective is when it is not used or when it is altered considerably. To give you a little background history, a sort of Ron's journal, I have to tell you some of the things which have been going on in the last few years of uh, which you are not uh, particularly well informed, I'm sure, but of which you have heard some vague rumor. On January the 22nd of 1963, the Food and Drug Administration uh, made a raid with drawn guns on our organization in Washington, D.C., immediately after we had offered to then-President Kennedy assistance in his national programs with the use of Scientology. His reply to this, apparently, was to order a raid on our organization. I determined at that time that organizations must carry on a line of defense and that I must accelerate the technology uh, advance and uh, wrap up the entire subject in a very short time. I have probably done something on the order of a century of research in the very few years since 1963 and can advise you now that I have completed uh, any and all of the technology required from WOG 2OT. The FDA raid, uh, thanks to the able actions of the Washington organization and uh, the defense which I arranged and other things, uh, eventually came to nothing. It was heard sometime earlier this year, and at this time I have yet to hear of any finding being handed down or any further action taken. There have been in the United States several income tax attacks on Washington, D.C., on myself, 
and on the uh, non-profit status of the organizations there. And I wish to advise you that all this has been uh, delayed now and uh, you might say put in mothballs by the government pending some sort of activity. There was an income tax attack on myself earlier uh, this year and last year and uh, uh, from the United States and uh, uh, both of these actions were won by ourselves, which more or less removed any danger from the Washington organization since the government was using it a tax on me as a pretext to seize the Washington organizations. In this they failed utterly and completely. In 1966, knowing that the world would not go on forever without war, and knowing that it might be very advisable for us to have all of our materials in a safe repository, I went down to southern Africa in order to establish an area where this could be affected. What happened there is that the people of the countries involved uh, began to write me fan mail in floods. I appeared many times on TV and radio and uh, my popularity was very great and this could not be confronted by a fellow named Smith and uh, some others and they refused to extend my visa. There was no more to this than that. There have been several parliamentary attacks upon us and the state of these attacks is uh, a very interesting. Only one parliament, that of Victoria uh, in Australia, ever took any action of any kind and all other parliaments were uh, incapable of bringing about any action and one right after the other have faded away. With all of this action being taken against us in the last uh, 17 years, I uh, found after the Southern African matter that it was vitally necessary that I isolate who it was on this planet who was attacking us. The attacks were always of the same pattern. They always followed the same uh, newspaper routes. Uh, they always uh, used the same type of parliamentary member and uh, I thought that I had better uh, look into this very thoroughly. The organization under the direction of Mary Sue employed and actually had employed earlier than I returned from Southern Africa, employed several professional uh, intelligence agents who had uh, long and successful professional backgrounds and uh, they looked into this matter for us and the results of their activities, uh, although still in progress, uh, have told us all that we needed to know with regard to any enemy we had on this planet. Our enemies on this planet are less than 12 men. They are members of the Bank of England and other higher financial circles. They own and control newspaper chains and they are, oddly enough, directors in all the mental health groups in the world which have sprung up. Now these chaps uh, are very interesting fellows. They have fantastically corrupt backgrounds, uh, illegitimate children, uh, government graft, uh, a very unsavory lot. And they apparently, sometime in the rather distant past, had determined upon a course of action. Being in control of most of the gold supplies of the planet, they entered upon a program of bringing every government to bankruptcy and under their thumb, so that no government would be able to act politically without their permission. The rest of their apparent program was to 
use mental health, which is to say psychiatric electric shock and prefrontal lobotomy, to remove from their path any political dissenters. Uh, they were the people behind the Siberia bill, which almost passed the House of Representatives in the United States and did pass, if I remember rightly, the Senate, which gave the power to any governor in, of any state in the United States simply to pick up anyone on the street and send him to Alaska. We defeated this Siberia bill and many other mental health quote-unquote acts of this character, but never really before knew from whom they were coming. Anyway, these uh, fellows have gotten nearly every government in the world to owe them considerable quantities of money through various chicaneries. And uh, they control, of course, income tax, the government finance. Uh, Wilson, for instance, uh, the current premier of England, is uh, totally involved with these fellows and talks about nothing else, actually. They organized these mental health groups which sprang up simultaneously all over the world and anything that has mental health in it, as in its name, or uh, mental hygiene, or other things of that character, such names as that, are all part of the organization which stems from these less uh, than a dozen, really, men. Now, this is very interesting, uh, because we uh, innocently uh, move forward in 1950 and came straight across uh, this very, very broad uh, plot. If there was a cure to mental illness, then people would say, I, you had better send him to an auditor and would begin to ask questions if someone uh, was electric shocked or given a prefrontal lobotomy, whereas only by electric shocking and prefrontal lobotomies uh, could they effectively remove their political enemies or objectors. Now, of course, these fellows are very suppressive indeed, and uh, they are uh, actually quite miserable. Uh, they are there fighting the Martians, and uh, everyone and anyone is their enemy. Uh, they are very badly served. Any of their people can be bought for a hundred pounds. Uh, these fellows are uh, unable, of course, as any suppressive, really to complete a cycle of action, and they always choose the wrong target whenever they go about anything. They have failed in nearly every part of their mission, except uh, this one of making every government bankrupt and owe them fantastic sums. Now, these chaps control newspaper chains through one of their number, Sir, uh, I don't know if it's Sir, but it's Cecil King, and uh, these newspaper chains go down into southern Africa, they go into Australia, uh, they go into, uh, of course, uh, all parts of the world, and this newspaper chain was what was being used to try to give us a bad name. It was very interesting that the only effort they ever made was simply to discredit us. That is what they could be counted upon to do, simply discredit us and discredit the workability. There is no faintest doubt in their minds but what our technology does work because many other uh, such uh, uh, activities as subub and so forth have gone on unmolested by them. It is only the intensely workable technology of Scientology which has attracted their ire. They have collected rather interesting files uh, on us, our people and organizations, and uh, their orders concerning what to do about this as part of their files all makes very interesting reading. We, of course, have full copies of their files. It was, of course, their bad luck to tangle with someone who had been trained in the field of intelligence by the Allied governments, which is myself, and they uh, had insufficient security and insufficient loyalty amongst their own people to keep out the intelligence agents which we sent in against them. 
that is a very cloak and dagger activity, uh, which is more or less over at this time. Uh, we have, however, our own files on them, and a corrupt lot they are. I think we probably have enough to discredit them utterly if we ever published what we knew. But our position with regard to this dozen uh, fellows, I think they number about ten, really. Count in a couple of their major henchmen and you have a dozen. Uh, I think probably that uh, they will never be successful at anything. Suppressive seldom are. Uh, gradual inflation is leading them forward to where even their own personal fortunes will probably be eclipsed in the debacle which they themselves are manufacturing. Gradual inflation of money will of course make theirs worthless too. Now these people are not our major objective. We are not even vaguely dedicated to their destruction. Uh, otherwise, we long since would have utilized uh, the information which we have on them. Uh, if you were driving a fire engine toward a raging fire and some cur dogs rushed out to bark at your wheels, I don't think you would stop and begin to fight the cur dogs unless you were quite mad, of course. And that is our position. There is a fire which we are en route to put out. And uh, this is the line we are traveling and this other is merely a sideshow which has been impeding and has made the work relatively difficult. It is rather hard to uh, drive uh, with a dozen cur dogs getting in underneath your wheels and around and about the fire engine. But you see at once that the world is not full of people who are against us. As a matter of fact, they went much too far and the public has now begun to turn in our direction. They said too much, which was untrue. The man who was hired by Sir William Carr, one of these fellows, to smash Scientology through the press uh, was made the editor of the London Daily Mail. Uh, he published in his own column a great many vicious things concerning Scientology and uh, at the end of the road the newspaper had lost 80,000 circulation and he was dismissed. Further, this was the only London newspaper which engaged upon a program of that nature against Scientology. Recently, some magazine has written the most uh, interesting letter I think I have read for some time. They wanted to know uh, when they could interview me because they had to have a story on a man who was changing our times and uh, who was this and that, all very laudatory, rather amazing. The state of the FDA is amazing because in their press releases, which uh, they have handed out. Uh, they have said that uh, they had to be very careful with me because there was no telling where I might turn up. And they went on for many pages saying how Scientologists uh, were quite uh, uh, elusive. And uh, the whole tone of the thing is that they were afraid of us. And uh, this, is, this is very interesting uh, because we don't happen to be after them. But uh, now the attack is on the basis that we're after them, they are not after us. As a matter of fact, if they only knew it, we couldn't be less interested. The program which I am laid down and embarked upon in January of 1963 has been brought off to total uh, success at the moment through the world, aside from a few yapping uh, voices heard here and there, things have never been quieter uh, than they are now. We're winning through this rather easily, through the uh, great alertness of organizations and their staffs, and through the services of intelligence officers, and through my uh, strategy on the matter. Mary Sue's extremely good work, and uh, 
overall coordinated performance by us and not permitting ourselves to be distracted from our main purposes has all come out toward a very high win for us. And amongst all those, I have been able, despite all of these other things that I had to do, to bring off and bring forward to its total conclusion the research and so on, up from clear to OT. Well now, as you may have suspected, I do not necessarily lead a quiet life. I, I was not much made for an ivory tower or even a, a desk, and uh, my my adventures during the past few months have been uh, rather interesting, to say the least. So long as we are elusive or Fabian, we grow strong. So I have examine these statistics and we have grown in numbers to the degree that nobody could quite put a finger on what we were doing. Therefore I have maintained considerable security and shall continue to do so on the activities in which we are engaged, but that does not make them a secret of course from Scientologists. It has been my lot to introduce a technology which was antipathetic to the best laid plans of mice and to suffer the consequences uh, for the next many years and the cycle of public opinion is now uh, rising again on the subject of myself. Uh, I was uh, supposed to be according to the press a complete devil or fiend and uh, now uh, it seems that uh, I am a man who is changing our times and all of that sort of thing. Well, I frankly could not uh, care less uh, what the public uh, thinks about me. I am uh, solely interested in getting the job done. And as I say, I have uh, many adventures along this line. And last December, of 1966, I concluded that I had gone as far as I could go uh, without taking uh, further forthright action with our technology, and I used an old, old principle of Scientology, which consists of putting the injured uh, member exactly on and in the place it was injured. If you were to bump your head on a certain door a little bit later, if you go back and touch your head against that door, you of course will suffer the full somatic for a moment of the impact. It has to be that exact point to produce this exact phenomenon. And so I decided that I had better go out and contact an exact point or two, not so much for me, but where things had happened in ages past which were uh, really the beginning of the demise, or were the demise, uh, for this civilization as it then existed. Without telling anyone about this, uh, or what I intended to do, I went out and uh, took my life in my hands, you might say, and uh, brought the matter off. Uh, the mystery of this universe and this particular area of the universe has been, as far as its track is concerned, completely occluded. No one has ever been able to make any breakthrough and come off with it and know what happened. As a matter of fact, it is so occluded that if anyone tried to penetrate it, as I'm sure many have, they died. The material involved in this sector is so vicious that it is carefully arranged to kill anyone if he discovers the exact truth of it. So in January and February of this year, 
I w became very ill, uh, almost lost this body, and uh, somehow or another uh, brought it off and obtained uh, the material and uh, was able to live through it. I am very sure that I was the first one that ever did live through any attempt to attain that material. This material I'm talking about, of course, is very upper level uh, material, and you will forgive me if I don't describe it to you in very broad detail, because it's very likely to make you sick too. Now my task for the remainder of the year, uh, up until now, which is to say that ensuing six months, was to find some way to safely bring through individuals. It was not enough for I myself to have lived through it, other people would have to do so as well when they reached clear and tried to move up from that point above. And about five or six weeks ago, I finally was able to make a breakthrough which brought people through this zone safely. It is relatively easy to do now, providing one is an extremely well-trained auditor. And the band of fire can be walked through bringing one out the other side unscathed, providing he applies exact technology. No one is in danger of colliding with this at lower levels, since it concerns the formation of the society itself in which we live. A person is clear on the first dynamic. It is necessary to become OT to be cleared on all dynamics including that of society and that of the physical universe. So I have also made this breakthrough. And I don't mean to mind telling you it, 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 it took some doing. In all the 18 years, this has been the toughest one that I have faced. And I faced it so that it would not be tough for you to face when you came to it. I formed the C organization of OTs uh, in order to have an area where a Scientologist could come uh, who could safely then walk through this last wall of fire. As the road to OT has to do with confronting and confronting life and confronting both the evil and the good thereof, the people of the Sea Organization are also becoming very experienced in the handling and confronting of MEST. This, however, is not part of the program for people we put through this last barricade. Objections to learning the ultimate truth of this universe and what happened to it and why are so deeply implanted in people that it is necessary for any extremely advanced level to be relatively out of the common area and not planted on the crossroads of the world. So therefore the sea organization is simply organizing bases which are off the main track of man and in these bases we will be able to push people through and also to handle uh, situations with regard to Scientology uh, to help it get in ethics on this planet. It uh, is quite aside from the point, but may be a slight matter of interest, that uh, all of this recent career has been relatively hard on this poor body. I have broken its back, broken its knee, and now have a broken arm because of the strenuousness of these particular adventures. One wonders then, well, if he is in such good shape, what is he doing breaking up his body? Well, that is the trouble. I, I, have, I have a great difficulty getting down to the small power level uh, of, of a body and uh, it suddenly, uh, if something happens in its vicinity, I will suddenly move it or yank it in some direction. And it is very, very difficult 
to uh, keep it in any kind of condition. Uh, I'm keeping it alive because it is a symbol and uh, because it is still needful and because it would be upsetting, to, at least to the wog side of the world, if uh, uh, a symbol of this body were to disappear. But it certainly is hard on it and certainly is hard on me. In searching out and forming bases, I have covered a great many sea miles, and because the ships available uh, were not yet complete, I was using a small yacht, the Enchanter, and although she is a steel vessel and very, very strong, uh, she nevertheless uh, was operating in seas which were far beyond her class and capability and built as she is of WOG uh, engines and technologies it has taken a considerable genius uh, to keep this vessel going if you understand uh, the, the extent of it I have worn out several crews of OTs in the progress of this search and establishment in just the last few months. It has not really worn them out. It is just that this vessel has gone through her cruise rather uh, rapidly and they are then returned to other work and activities to recuperate. As it has only been a very few uh, weeks since I found a proper line through. Uh, these people have not yet been through the wallifier of what is called really Section 3 OT, and uh, so they are having their troubles too, and we are just now embarked upon putting the entire personnel of the sea organization uh, who are eligible for it through Section 3 OT, and then we won't be wearing out so many crews. But these people, these people are magnificent. They're magnificent. You, you, you should see them. Uh, they, of course, uh, would be stellar names in any organization in the world. If one of these people were to walk in, you would undoubtedly know them by name, and uh, they have considerable reputation, and uh, they would just do fine. Uh, perhaps, and perhaps are, could be said to be needed in their organizations and areas doing lots of good. But I've already made an experiment. I went off by myself into Southern Africa to see whether or not an OT would make good singly and all alone without any assistance against the environment around him. And I found out that he would not do too much good. That a group of OTs would be uh, entirely uh, irresistible and are necessary to carry off this type of operation. So OTs do best with OTs. The mission of organizations is to form the first part of the bridge up from the walk world up to the level of clear. It is as far from clear to OT as it is from walk to clear. Organizations are performing their actions in this very splendidly. The only thing that they could improve would be holding in ethics more strongly and getting tech more exactly rendered, having their examinations more precise since endless trouble comes from misdeclares, and expanding further into the public more quickly. This is what organizations ought to be doing. The individual auditor and Scientologist is performing his mission very, very well and is doing marvelously. There isn't enough praise I could give. In the lower grades, one is mainly concerned with himself and his own case or his immediate family, but as one moves up the line, uh, one becomes more concerned with the environment and the world in which he lives and with this concern comes the realization that all has not been well. And it is very true that a great catastrophe occurred on this planet and in the other 75 planets which formed this confederacy 75 million years ago. It has since that time been a desert and it has been the lot of just a handful to try to push its technology up to a level where someone might adventure forward, penetrate 
the catastrophe and undo it. We are well on our way to making this occur. As one's ability to confront increases, his level of responsibility increases. And an OT cannot be an OT in a world which is insane or a universe which is mad. Although the scope of the work is almost unimaginably extensive, it is nevertheless true that we are making definite and positive inroads upon this, and we will bring it off. We are no longer dealing with the time span of man, which is 70 years. We are dealing with the centuries. And we have enough time at the upper levels to bring it off, providing we work quickly enough at the lower levels and within the framework of the society itself to prevent it from destroying itself before we attain our purposes and goals. It possibly is a bit above your reality to say that we intend to salvage this sector. No one has been able to do it for 75 million years. We are the first. In that period of time, there has been nothing but suffering and misery for its populations. Life is not necessarily a miserable mess, and a planetary population is not necessarily composed of madmen. It is very easy to remedy the general situation. There are many, 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 many people out in the society who are only too glad to have us, who are only too glad to help, and who will happily shove forward. That, the malady from which they suffer, is actually designed to stop or impede such a movement as ours, is not of any great major consideration. We have already mastered those things necessary to bring off the ultimate win. Well, I hope here that this talk I have given you is somewhat informative and that it will help you understand what is going forward. The uh, situation is very well in hand. What we are doing is extremely conservative in most respects and is very necessary. And although one may not be part of the furthest echelon, the advanced bases and areas of Scientology, it is actually quite laudable to be part of its organizations anywhere along the line. Every man, every girl serves. Without your support, we could do nothing. And so we are very glad of your support. Any suppressive element is bound to lean on us very hard. And where it is permitted to enter the organization and permitted to make nothing of our plans and activities, of our purposes, and even our gains, we will lose to that extent. Therefore, we must have a very tight ethics perimeter inside our organizations. And those people who are making slighting remarks about what is going on are simply in their own way trying to stop the forward progress. All they will really succeed in doing is stopping themselves. In that, you have not heard of me uh, directly, or from me directly, here for some little time. I thought I had better have a talk with you and tell you what it was all about and tell you where things sat now. And I can assure you that anyone connected with the great catastrophe of ages back has been dead almost the same length of time. They brought about the catastrophe and they perished within six years. We do not have any enemies except suppressive, dramatizing men who are themselves the victims of something that happened here. From here on, the world will change. But if it changes at all, and if it recovers, it will be because of the Scientologist it will be because of the auditor and his technical skill. It will be because of the organization and the organization staff member and his dedication. In all the broad universe, there is no other hope for man than ourselves. This is a tremendous responsibility. I have borne it 
too long alone. You share it with me now. This is, however, the game in which everyone wins, no matter what ethics action is taken, no matter what activities go forward. In the ultimate, everyone will win. I am very thankful that you exist. I need your help. I need your support. And no matter what you are doing in Scientology, outside or inside organizations, you are helping me and you are helping us and you are also moving forward to the resolution of aberration, war, and dismay in this universe. An essential difference between us and those who make mock of such efforts is we know where we're going, we know what we're doing, and we're moving forward on a very positive, laudable, decent track. We are doing our jobs. That cannot be said for others. I'm very glad to have had this opportunity to talk to you, and I hope the data I have given you is of some aid and assistance in clarifying what is going on and dispelling uh, any doubts or wonders. And more importantly, I hope is of use in aligning the efforts to come forward and to make this a better world and a better universe. Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate what you're doing. I need your help. And I'm very grateful for what you have done. Goodbye for now. I will see you up the line at the other end of the bridge.